Week 2. Things are going smoothly so far, but I can't help but get the feeling that I'm being watched. Everyone loves my videos, but I feel like there's someone, or something, staring into the back of my skull. I'll find out soon, but for now, I just need to finish this video. <laughs> I definitely can help with that. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, hey! So, you're an aspiring fanfic reader? Don't worry, you'll get your precious Vicodin back. But if anyone is going to be giving you those tips on how to do fanfic readings, it's going to be done my way. I'm the Lost Narrator. I'm a fanfic reading extraordinaire, and I'm here to give you 10 tips on how to do fanfic readings. Before we begin, though, I want to mention that there are a few first tips that are mentioned in the last video on how to get started in voice acting. I'd recommend that you watch both videos, since the more believable you make your voice, the better your readings will be. Without further ado, let's begin. Number one, get a mic and an audio program. Let's be honest, it's hard to do a reading without a mic. The basic equipment that you're going to want before you even start doing a fanfic reading is a microphone and an audio program. Of course, if you're trying to work with what you have, then even a phone or a gaming headset will do. Just be aware that you're going to have to do more work with your audio than normal. For those of you that have a few extra dollars to spend, considering looking up a condenser USB microphone, such as the ones that we mentioned in last week's video. All of these will provide you with a good audio recording. The recommended audio program is Audacity, since it's free and very comprehensive. You can record and edit audio inside of Audacity, and it has a bunch of effects that you can start to play with once you get better. There are other programs that you can use, such as Adobe Audition, if you have a few extra dollars, but Audacity is the one recommended for most readers. If you're wanting to release these readings on YouTube, then you might want to consider picking up a video creation software as well. The most popular ones are Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere, and Final Cut Pro iMovie and Movie Maker are free alternatives for Windows and Mac users. For those of you who are barely starting out, I definitely recommend these programs. As long as you save early and often, since fanfic readings are more focused on audio than the visual aids. Once you have your setup ready, it's time to prepare your voice. Number 2. Finding your range Since fanfic readings are completely reliant on audio, knowing your range is a good way to be ready for when you want to start reading. There are so many fanfic readers throughout the fandom, and all of them have a distinct voice in their recordings. This is how they get popular because they differentiate themselves so every fanfic reader doesn't sound the same. Much like how people follow me for my grim, dark, and mysterious voice, perhaps your voice will work for more comedic or tragic stories. While you're able to branch out into other genres, it's best to read with your natural voice and expand on your range later. When you're recording, it's good to think of yourself as a character reading the story to your audience. While some stories make this character easier to play, it helps you act as if you know what's going on, and you can time jokes in a comedy or foreshadow a tragic event with ease. Once you're comfortable with reading out loud and in your own voice, it saves so much time because stories can take a long time to read. The less time that you mess up or mumble, the better. Number three, find a story. When you start, this is by far going to be the easiest step to get into fanfic readings because it's exactly like it sounds. You can find stories all over the internet. And if you're focusing on pony, look at Fim Fiction or Equestria Daily for an endless amount of stories. Though I'd recommend doing a story that hasn't been done by another reader for a few reasons. One of them being that being the first on a story is the best way to stand out in the fanfic reading community, especially if the author loves your reading. The second being that your reading will look like a dime a dozen if that story's already been done by several other readers. Go for shorter stories or one-shots when you first do readings, because you need some readings under your belt. If you're polishing a 100,000 word story for months, it's harder to learn what to do right and what you've done wrong when some of the problems could simply be due to the length of the fic or that you're being a novice. You will also burn out quicker if you're working on a bigger project to start with, because it can be hard to get motivated and continue working on a big project, especially since readings might not even be something that you want to do. Getting your feet wet with smaller readings is the easiest way to see if you want to continue. For those of you who like numbers, I'd say one-shots or fan fictions below 6,000 words would be the best way to start. And then later down the road, you can start with multi-chapter fan fictions. Sometimes it can take up to 24 hours or more to edit one hour's worth of fanfic readings, and you have to be ready to dedicate that much time to editing, as well as learning how to edit better. Number four, read your story first before recording. 
Now, let's be honest. Not every story that you're going to read is going to be perfectly written. Even if it is, writing is very fickle, and it can trip you up when you're trying to record a reading on the first take. If you read a story beforehand, then you know what's going to happen at the end, which helps you play into the character that we mentioned earlier. An audiobook is a different ballgame from reading to yourself, and it allows you to get into the listener's head, literally, with emphasis pacing in your tone. This is all easier to convey once you know the story well. Now, you don't need to memorize the story, but if you're reading a sad fic that has a tragic ending, it might help if you change your tone when leading up to the end. Think of it as a rehearsal before the audition. If you don't know how a word is pronounced, look it up. If you feel like you're saying a word wrong, you probably are. If a story has Latin or a different language, it's best to know how it's pronounced because doing it wrong can ruin your listener's immersion. Reading the story can also help you if you even want to make a video of it in the first place. If you're reading a story and you like it, then you're definitely on the right track. Number five, learn your way around the audio program. Now that you know what story you're going to read, you have one more step until you record. Use either Audacity or whichever audio program you downloaded in order to record your reading. The best way to record is to keep it recording while you're talking and take out any parts where you mess up. Just make sure you don't accidentally cut out any lines or lose the voice that you're using for the reading. Like last week's video, the main functions that you will use in your reading is noise removal, compressor, and normalizer. There are a bunch of other functions in the effects tab that you can use once you're comfortable to experiment. If you still need a tutorial on the effects that we mentioned, we'll have some links in the description. As you improve your audio engineering, you'll learn tips and tricks to convey more than just your voice. Remember, all you have is the audio to keep someone engaged in your reading, and post-production can turn a good fanfic reader into a great one. Number six, record yourself reading the story. Along with the other tips we mentioned, make sure to show emotion throughout your story. If you can voice act or change your voice when a different character speaks, try and do so. But remember which character has which voice. This step is when you want to have the most voice differentiation that you can have. Different tones depending on the genre of the story, aloof and cheerful for comedies, while more grim for darker stories, will keep your listeners engaged. If you're voicing different characters for your own story, it is best to record them separately from your narration, since it's easier for you to maintain the different voices. If you try to record narration and character voices all together, they can sometimes blend. Number seven, learn how to spice up your recordings. All right, now that you've got your whole fanfic reading recorded, it's time to add a little bit more. You don't have to do this step when you're first starting off since it requires a little bit more micromanaging with audio files. Music and sound effects are the next step for making your audiobook shine. Just like with your tone, any music that you add is relevant upon the genre of your story. You don't want to put a fast Eurobeat track to a grim, dark, or sad story. Smile HD just got lucky. Sound effects can be a little bit more trickier, though, since it can take hours just to find the right sound effect for your scene. Not only that, but adding too many sound effects can be distracting, and it can take away from the reading's quality. The same goes with music. It shouldn't be said, but don't use copyrighted sound effects or music in your readings. It can affect your YouTube channel negatively and can get you in some hot water in the future. Play it safe and use royalty-free music or sound effects. A quick Google search can bring up some websites, but here are a few to get you started. Finally, when you start adding sound effects and music, you'll need to learn how to mix the audio. On Audacity, as you begin adding music and sound effects, you'll have them in different tracks from your reading. That way, you can change the volume on the sound effects and keep the music lower than the reading, so that it sounds more like thematic white noise than too loud or overbearing. As you become more experienced, the volume that you want your additions in will become like second nature. Just remember to not make it too loud or too quiet because it can make it distracting. Number eight, learn how to collaborate. Just like with voice acting, collaborations is one of the best ways to get more eyes on your readings. Collaborations are easier for readings because there is an endless amount of ways to split the work. You can have one person do half of the characters while you do the other half or be the narrator while the other plays the characters in the story. To find others for collaborations, make sure that you have a few readings already done and have posted them so that you can show off your resume to others. If other people feel that their voice would complement yours in a reading, then it's easier to get a collaboration. Just make sure to be respectful as you ask others for collaborations and run a project like the tips we provided last week. 
Number nine, do all the housekeeping for your reading. Now that your fanfic reading is done and you're ready to post it on YouTube or SoundCloud, there are a few things that you need to remember before you hit that publish button. Throughout the years, fanfic readers have provided more for their listeners to the point where it's become commonplace. Think of it as housekeeping or quality control for your readings. People want an mp3 download of the fanfic reading because a lot of listeners like to listen to readings while driving or traveling. The best way to provide them is rendering them as an mp3 in your video program and uploading them to Mediafire or SoundCloud. Provide a link to the story that you read in the description or as an annotation at the end of the video. The author will most likely be doing the same by spotlighting your reading in their blog or in the description of their story if they like it. If you do this for each reading, you'll gain subscribers every day by the consistent upload schedule. Make sure the description of your video looks clean and professional, and any additional pictures or media that you used is put in the story URL. If the video looks clean from top to bottom, you'll stand out amongst the competition, and your readings will soon become more of a blessing than an afterthought. Vicodin has mentioned that authors feel honored or having had their day made when a reader makes a video of their fiction. And if you're willing to learn, soon you can make writers feel the same way. Number 10. Have fun and keep improving. Fanfic readings are really fun to get into because they can be the focus of an entire channel or done on the side for fun while you work on other projects. Well, it can be a little intimidating to only rely on your audio knowledge to keep your audience interested, it can only get better if you're dedicated to learning. As you do more readings, research audio engineering, acting, and keep track of all the files that you've used or made. If you have templates on your videos and audio programs, it can save you minutes or even hours over time. Learning shortcuts in both Audacity and your other programs can save you even more time. If you keep a schedule of readings, keep collaborating, or look up tutorials to keep improving, hell, you might even pass me someday. Or I might even come up to you for a collaboration. Good luck and keep reading! Hopefully these tips help you out for any of you that are aspiring to do your own fanfic readings. If you guys are also fellow fanfic readers, and you guys have any tips or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below so we can have a dialogue and help each other out. I really hope that all of these tips did help you guys out. I've been asked this numerous times, and the fact that Vicodin has offered for me to give my expertise and opinion, I appreciate it, and I hope that this helps all of you in your ambitions and doing fanfic readings. And yes, good luck to all of you with your readings and your voice acting and all that jazz, and I'll talk to you all of you guys later, okay? Bye. Hey guys, I think Lost forgot to untie me. A little help here? Guys? Anyone? I'm alone. And hungry. And tired.